Hey guys, welcome back. So a simple yet very effective strategy to support your metabolic health and improve blood sugar regulation is to compress the window of time that you eat throughout the day. This is known as time-restricted eating. In today's show, we're gonna review a recently published study that found that just eating in a 10-hour window was associated with more significant improvements with regards to various metabolic health-related parameters and blood sugar-related parameters than eating in a 16-hour window which is really important because most people eat and they graze starting at eight in the morning till eight to 10 o'clock at night. So they're eating for like 16 hours a day sometimes. And that is linked with insulin resistance, belly fat gain, poor glucose disposal, uh, poor blood sugar fluctuations, and less time in a healthy glucose range. So I wanna share with you this particular study titled, Three Weeks of Time-Restricted Eating Improves Glucose Homeostasis in Adults with Type 2 Diabetes But Does Not Improve Insulin Sensitivity. This was a randomized crossover trial that was published in the journal Diabetologica in 2022. The scientists say time-restricted eating is suggested to improve metabolic health by limiting food intake to a defined time window, thereby prolonging the overnight fast. This prolonged fast is expected to lead to a more pronounced depletion of hepatic glycogen stores overnight and might improve insulin sensitivity due to an increased need to replenish nutrient storage. Previous studies have showed that beneficial metabolic effects of a six to eight hour window TRE regimen in healthy overweight adults leads to improvements in blood sugar control. Control. Now, we're going to talk about that study in just a moment, but this particular study just came across my feed, so I wanted to highlight it and show it to you here. Sweet treats before sleep disrupt the clock system and increases metabolic risk markers in healthy rats. Now, I know this was an animal model study, but there was other related studies that find that eating close to bedtime is linked with visceral fat gain and disruptions in sleep in women. And we talked about that in September of 2021. I will link that particular review there as well. So it's important to recognize that eating too close to bedtime is linked with poor body composition and blood sugar health. But again, what this study found and others find that time-restricted eating results in weight loss and improvements in insulin sensitivity and plasma glucose, yet has no side effects. That's what's really important to recognize is this is not like, oh my gosh, the consequences of compressing your fitting windows, you're gonna lose muscle mass or you're gonna cause cortisol to increase. There's literally no downside. There's only upside. So it just takes a little bit of willpower, a little bit of planning and saying, you know what? This is when I eat. You tell people, hey, do you wanna go out to dinner at 10 o'clock? Say, you know what? I don't eat dinner at 10 o'clock. I'll go with you. Maybe I'll have some water. Maybe I'll have some lemon, uh, some tea, something to that effect. You can still be social, but you need to be a person who has boundaries, who eats during a confined period of time during the day. My particular window is between 10 and six to eight. You know, and I give that little range there because on a nice summer Seattle day, sometimes, you know, this time of year, it's getting dark at 1030 at night. We might have dinner at eight o'clock. It's not a big deal, especially if you go for a walk after dinner. So be the person who has boundaries on when you eat food. And then eating outside of that window is linked with the development of diabetes, heart disease, and much more. But before we go on, I want to thank today's show sponsor, Blinkist.com. Now, my favorite part about Blinkist is the app enables you to understand the most important concepts and takeaways from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes, which is great if you're busy like me, you can get the key points and takeaways from books in just a fraction of the time. The other day I went for a hike with my daughter and we put on the book Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. It's an amazing book that helps you make smarter decisions when you don't have all the facts, which is often the case in life. Now, there's a great new feature that Blinkist offers known as Blinkist Spaces. This feature allows you to create space with friends and or family where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of a shared space can access all the titles within the space with or without a Blinkist premium membership. Sam and I use this feature all the time to share productivity books and business related books we're diving into to help make better content for you. So you can save 25% off your Blinkist annual premium membership. In the description below is a link to a seven day free trial. Again, the whole point of Blinkist is you can get all of the consolidated concepts of these excellent books in just 15 minutes. So if you have your kids around, your family around, and you just have a few minutes to spare, you can learn what you need to learn and get going. So definitely check out and take advantage of the seven day free trial. So going back to time restricted feeding, I think it's really important to recognize when you eat outside of this 10 hour window, that is when people start to experience increased rates of metabolic disease, whether it's prediabetes, diabetes, or excessive time outside of a normal glucose range above 140 milligrams per deciliter. And that again is the main finding from this particular study. It was a randomized crossover study where people did some uh, 16 hour feeding sessions.
sessions versus a 10 hour window. And what they found is there were significant differences in blood sugar control and the time spent outside of a healthy blood sugar range, which is really important. So that's what this, the main new findings from this study are. A three week, 10 hour time restricted eating regime did not result in alterations in hepatic glycogen and insulin sensitivity as compared to spreading the food intake over 14 hours. However, this was associated with a decreased 24 hour glucose level and fasting glucose levels resulting in increased time spent in normal glycemia, but did not alter energy expenditure or substrate oxidation. So I think that's important to remember. Again, when we spend all this time and having this glycemic variability and fluctuations, that's where we start to experience the deleterious health consequences linked with hyperglycemia. So by just compressing the time at which and defining your feeding window, you're going to experience improvements in metabolic health without actually changing the content of your diet or the substrates of your diet. And the scientists say that the time-restricted feeding regime was safe and feasible to adhere to even in adults with type 2 diabetes. Some of these individuals were on medications, some were not. So I think it's important to recognize that. And what is this range and what were the significant factors here? They say time-restricted eating increased the time spent in a normal glycemic range over the course of the day and decreased fasting glucose as well as 24-hour average glucose levels, but energy expenditure over the course of 24 hours was unaffected. And it did decrease a glucose oxidation, probably pivoting the body away from glucose metabolism towards fat metabolism, which I think is really important. So again, this is really easy to do, my friends. Just figure out a 10-hour window that works for you. Some people find eating earlier in the day and starting your fast earlier in the day, maybe starting eating breakfast at eight and having dinner at six. You know, for example, that'd be a reasonable routine. I like to do some activities in the morning before I actually start feeding, go for a walk, do some gardening, do some work and so forth. And then I start to wait for that natural hunger to increase, which is around 10, 1030. So figure out what's, what works for you and stick to that. Try to be consistent with that, especially if you have sleep issues. Many women, particularly when they're going through menopause or in the postmenopausal window, notice that their sleep changes. They're not, uh, they don't get the deep sleep. They might wake up at two in the morning, have to go to the bathroom and the like. And being consistent with your feeding fasting patterns helps to improve your body's circadian clock system, which can impact sleep quality and sleep duration. So it's really important to remember that. So hopefully you found this video helpful and the studies linked herein. I certainly did. And there's more and more evidence to suggest that time-restricted eating is a safe and effective strategy to improve metabolic health, and it may enhance weight loss in certain subjects. But this study found, again, that it's an awesome strategy for keeping your blood sugar health in normal ranges and decreasing average fasting glucose. So I want to thank you for tuning in all the way through to the very end. Thanks for hitting that like button. If you enjoyed the content, please share this with a friend, and I will look forward to hearing from you in the comments below.